Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In this next series of videos, we're going to be talking about linear functions. So basically what linear functions are, how do we solve them, and how do we deal with them when multiple ones come up. So systems of equations and also systems of inequalities when we're dealing with uh, linear functions. So we're going to start with some uh, basic ideas here. What is a linear function? So the idea is that algebraically, we're looking at y equals mx plus b. Now, of course, we've seen this since Algebra 1. Of course, keep in mind that we are talking about functions, so we really want f of x equals m times x plus b. From a tabular standpoint, what we're really looking at is a table of x and f of x, where as one of these has a constant rate of change, the other one has a constant rate of change as well. So to get from one value to the next value, I'm adding 6. So I have to be consistent, and I need to consistently add 6 to get that next value, and continue doing so to get that next value. So tabularly, when my x's have a constant rate of change, my f of x also have to have a constant rate of change. Graphically, What I'm looking at is from some x and y axis, I'm going to have some starting point, and I'm always going to have the same uh, rise as this goes. In other words, the rate of change that I'm going up, this is plus 2. The next time I go from that point to that point, that's going to be a plus 2. As long as this horizontal distance is always the same. So as long as I'm dealing with a constant horizontal distance, I should be expecting a constant vertical distance. As a matter of fact, we, we have names for these terms. So we have m from our algebraic standpoint. This is what we call the slope. And the slope is the average rate of change. Per unit input. In other words, here, since my input's going up by 1, this average rate of change, which should be constant, it should be the same, is plus 6. So in this case, my slope would be 6. In this case, because I'm going up 2 as I go over 1, per unit input, my slope in this case would be 2. The other expression that I have here is the linear, the constant expression, the b, and b represents our y-intercept. In other words, the initial conditions, the initial conditions, when our input equals zero. So in this case, because when our input is zero, our output is three. Here, b would be equal to three. Here, because our output is 1 when our input is 0, here we would say that b equals 1. And so if I was writing equations for this table or this graph, I would have to write it using the m's and v's that we've discovered. So this tabular expression would be 6x plus 3, and this graphical one would be f of x equals 2x plus 1. And so the idea is that I can deal with these from a graphical, algebra, tabular, or verbal standpoint. All of these have slope. All of these have a y-intercept. So going in a little bit more detail, what is slope? In other words, how do we calculate slope? And so again, I want to start from a algebra 1 standpoint. The normal way that we calculated the slope would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In other words, given two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, I would take each of these numeric values, substitute them into this expression, and evaluate. But keep in mind that we've been talking about functions, and when I talk about y sub 2, because I'm dealing with y equals m times x plus b, that means that y1 is really m times x1 
plus b. And that y2 is really m times x2 plus b. So for us, I can really think of this as being f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. But also keep in mind when we were talking from a graphical standpoint that when I have a line, I'm going to have one point here at some x1, y1, and this point is going to be some distance away from the next point on my graph, the x2, y2. So I could really say that x1 is, x2 is really x1 plus a little bit, x1 plus this h. And so we'll often see it written as f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 over x1 plus h minus x1. And you notice that these form a zero sum. So sometimes I'll see f of x plus h minus f of x over h, just being lazy and, and not writing the uh, x1 here. So this we often call our difference quotient. And there's an entire class devoted to understanding the properties of this difference quotient, which we call calculus. So for us, it's important for us to distinguish with these linear functions what happens with our slope. So if our slope is greater than zero, we say that this is an increasing function. Because if slope is greater than zero, that means to get to the next point, I have to go up a certain number of units. So my graph has to be increasing. If m is less than zero, then we call that a decreasing function. Because given some point, my next point has to be down per unit uh, input. And if m is equal to zero, we say this is a constant function. Of course, if this is zero, then this whole term kind of goes away and I've got y equals a constant value. And so my value just stays the same no matter what. So we really have three different ways of looking at a line. A line can be increasing per unit input, it can be decreasing per unit input, or it can be constant per unit input. And I say per unit input because there are several situations where we'll be dealing with as x as input, but sometimes we'll be talking about time being the input. Sometimes we'll talk about cost or revenue or some other money as being our input. And so keep in mind, even though most of the examples we talk about is y being equal to a function of x, for our purposes, it doesn't have to be x. It could be a function of t or it could be a function of money, or it could be a function of anything. Just realize that our input is going to establish our domain, and our output is going to establish our range. So there are several different forms that we have of lines, and there are two that we're gonna be talking about in this video. One is what we call a uh, slope-intercept form. And it's called slope-intercept form because it's really obvious what the slope and what the intercept is. We'll often see this form being y equals m times x plus b. Of course, m is our slope and b is our intercept. And this is really our y-intercept. In other words, where our graph intercepts the y-axis. The other uh, linear form that we're often going to see is called point-slope. And what's nice about point slope is that it's not dependent on a y-intercept. It's not dependent about knowing what happens when our independent variable equals zero. We can say that it's going to be y minus some y1 value equals m times x minus x1. And this has a slope of m. So the slope part is exactly the same. But instead of having an intercept, we actually have a point that it passes through. We know that it passes through the point x1, y1. And the best way to understand this is to go through a couple of examples of this. So I'm going to go do a couple of examples of this, but it's really stuff that you've seen in your Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 uh, classes. So let's say I've got a line with slope 4 passing through the point 
2 comma negative 5. So there's the easiest way to do this is because I have the slope and because I have the point, I'm going to be looking at that point slope form. So y minus my y coordinate equals m times x minus my x coordinate. Here my y coordinate is negative 5, my x coordinate is 2, and my slope is 4. So I really have y minus a negative 5 equals 4 times the expression x minus 2. And for us, it's going to be convenient to isolate y, so we're going to first get rid of this minus a negative by making it positive, and then the other thing we're going to do is distribute this 4. So I really have y plus 5 equals 4x minus 8. And then to isolate y, finally I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and I get y equals 4x minus 13. So what I've got here is a line that's in slope intercept form. But I should be able to recognize the point slope form, because if I'm dealing with the SAT, I may see this in point slope form. If I'm seeing this on an AP exam, I'll often see it in point slope form. So just be aware that both of these forms exist and that either of these forms could be the answer that we're looking for. So I want to do one more example. So in this example, I've got a line that's passing through the point negative 2, 3, and 4, 9. And the thing I want you to notice is that if I'm dealing with our slope intercept form, or if I'm dealing with my point intercept form, the thing that's consistent is that I need slope. So we have our formula for slope. We know that our slope is supposed to be the change in y over the change in x. So negative 9 minus 3 over 4 minus a negative 2. And what's important that we be consistent. Now I say be consistent, notice that I started off here and saying this is my y2 and this is my y1. This is my x2, excuse me, ooh, horrible, 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 horrible stuff. This is my y2, this is my x2, this is my y1, and this is my x1. But if I was to do it a slightly different way, say this is my y2, and this is my x2, this is my y1, and this is my x1, what I'll find is that I get the exact same answer. So here if I do 3 minus a negative 9 over, here x2 is negative 2, minus 4. If I evaluate this expression, I have 3 plus 9, which is 12, over negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6, so I get negative 2 as a slope. If I do the same thing for this first expression, I end up with a negative 12 over a positive 6, which is also negative 2. So be consistent. There is no one right way to do this, but it is important that you be consistent with whatever you do. For us, our slope is 2, and now, because I have points, I think this point slope is really going to be best for us. But again, I'm going to do it both ways. So I'm going to start by using this point over here. So y minus 3 equals negative 2 times the expression x minus a negative 2. And as I did before, I'm going to distribute this negative 2. So this is really negative 2x, negative, 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 that's a triple negative, so that's still negative. So I've got y minus 3 equals negative 2x minus 4. And then I need to move this negative 3 over so that I get y equals negative 2x minus 1. If, however, I decided that I was going to use this point instead, so I'd have y minus a negative 9 equals 4 times, excuse me, equals 2 times x minus 4. So I'd really have y plus 9 equals 2x minus 8 when I distribute and when I get rid of this negative. And then moving the 9 to the other side, I get y equals, did I forget that negative? I forgot the negative from my slope. Er. Negative 2x, that would be a plus, and when I subtract the 9, I end up with a minus 1. Notice that it doesn't matter which point I use. It doesn't matter which of these slopes I use because they're the same. All that matters is that I'm consistent. If I use one of these as the x1, I need to make sure that I use the y1 that corresponds with it. So in this case, in this first example, the one I did in blue, the x1 and the y1 came from here. 
In the second example, the x1 and the y1 came from here. Just make sure that you're consistent and you'll do well on these expressions. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.